So I'm Howie Hawkins. I'm the Green Party candidate for governor. And this is my first news conference here in New York City since the primary last Thursday. And first thing I want to say is to those progressives that voted for Cynthia Nixon and Jemani Williams and Zephyr Teachout, we're plan B. We feel your pain, but we're here for you. We're the progressive alternative left on the ballot. And I do want to say it's too bad the Greens were left out of the pre-primary debate because I think we would have contributed a lot to sharpening and clarifying the issues for the voters. They left us out in the pre-primary. I'll talk about some of those issues in a minute, but uh, hopefully we'll have that opportunity going forward. And I want to say that the people I'm running with are the most experienced. They're veterans of social movements, progressive social movements. They're the most qualified candidates of anybody running, Democrat or Republican. My running mate for lieutenant governor is Gia Lee. She's a public school teacher and one of the leading organizers of grassroots teachers around the country. You heard about these strikes in the so-called red right to work sites of West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Arizona. She helped them organize. She's just spent a week in Puerto Rico where the Trump administration wants to privatize all the schools after Hurricane Maria, this disaster capitalism. She was down there helping those teachers organize to resist that. Our candidate for attorney general, Michael Sussman, has hundreds of cases of experience in state and federal courts on up to the U.S. Supreme Court. He's far more experienced than any of the other candidates running, Democrat and Republican. Put their resumes together. He's got more experience. He has landmark civil rights cases that he's passed, the Yonkers desegregation case, the discrimination against black and Latino uh, civil service workers, the case for D.J. Henry, a black student that was murdered by a white cop that they wouldn't prosecute in Westchester. He got a $6 million settlement for the family. This guy is no joke, and the media should be covering him. He's a serious candidate. And finally, Mark Dunley, who is our candidate for comptroller, longtime anti-poverty activist, three decades with the Hunger Action Network, a board member of the Fiscal Policy Institute. He knows progressive fiscal policies, and he's the only candidate calling for divestment of the state pension funds from fossil fuels. And I'm calling for real debates this election with all the candidates who are on the ballot, four debates at least, New York City, Capital District, Western New York, Central New York, on four topics, the economy, government reform, climate and the environment, and then the social policies from education and health care to criminal justice reform and civil rights. So we can go into these issues in depth, and I'm asking that the civic and the media organizations get together and work with all the candidates to find dates, but set the terms so these can be real debates. What we've had since 2010 is they all wait for Cuomo to say yes. So we get one debate near the end of the campaign, probably while a Monday or Sunday night football game is going on, on a station like NPR out of Buffalo. He's avoiding the debate, and the media and civic organizations should not let him get away with that. Because we have serious issues in this state. The people running this state can't even find a single day to have primaries. We got one day in April for presidential, another day in June for federal, and then in September we got state local. Voters are confused. It's a simple problem to solve. They can't solve that. How are they going to solve the problem of our schools? Or the housing? Or the climate? Or the segregation? We're the most segregated city and state in the nation for both housing and schooling. So I just came from the 10th anniversary, no, not the 10th, the 7th anniversary of the Occupy movement over at Liberty Plaza, what they call Zugatti Park. And the fact is, Occupy put issues on the table, but they didn't resolve them. My campaign is aiming to resolve them because the 1%, you know what we said in Occupy, banks got bailed out, we got sold out. And the situation now is that the top 1% in this state is got every year since the great crash in 08, which caused Occupy, has got more than 31% of all income. In 1980, they were getting 12%. In the city, they were getting 12%. Now they got 41%. They are basically hoarding the wealth, and then they whine about taxes they might have to pay so we can have decent schools and health care. So I'm saying they can pay a little more taxes. They'll still be super rich and they can pay a stock transfer tax, graduated brackets on the multi-millions so that we can fund what's needed, which is five-year, $32 billion 
fix of NYCHA to get the lead and the mold out and the elevators and the roofs and the boilers fixed. It's a $37 billion 10-year fix for the MTA, which is absolutely necessary. And just a few billion more to get full funding to public schools, a couple billion to get really get tuition-free higher education at CUNY and SUNY. We had tuition-free CUNY from 1848 to 1976. We're a richer city and state than we were then, yet these students got to pay tuition, and a lot of them can't afford to stay in school. The Excelsior Scholarship that Cuomo put out there, only 2% of the CUNY students qualify because you got to graduate on a fast schedule, and if you're a low income, you got to work to cover your living expenses. You can't go through school that fast. You can't get that scholarship. So he talks about tuition free. It's not really. He talks about a $15 minimum wage. Well, let me tell you, if I'm not governor, I go back to work for UPS at 1040 an hour in, in November during the peak season. So, Governor, where's our $15? There are a lot of people really struggling up here. So now, let me just close by saying, you know, there's some real issues that didn't get clarified in the Nixon-Cuomo debate. Nixon would say to Cuomo, oh, you got to get behind the Community and Climate Protection Act. But the fact is that bill basically codifies Cuomo's energy policy. It, both of them, both Cuomo and that bill, call for the state to get to 50% renewable electricity by 2030. Electricity is only 28% of the carbon footprint. So that means they will lower the carbon footprint by 14% by 2030. That's really too slow to deal with the climate crisis. And then that bill says nothing about stopping fracked gas infrastructure and other fossil fuel infrastructure. So the competitive power of interest plant up there in Orange County, which was greased with the bribe from the former treasurer and national finance director of the Democratic Party, Peter Lewis Kelly Jr., to Joe Prococo, Cuomo's brother from another mother, that plant will add 10% more to our carbon footprint. And that bill is permitted, I mean, that plan is permitted under this so-called Climate and Community Protection Act. So basically the bill codifies Cuomo's energy policy. It says 100% reduction of greenhouse gases by 2050. Too late to deal with the climate crisis. Cuomo says 80%. That's the only difference. And everything else is all Cuomo. pro frack gas, pro-subsidies for nuclear power, no benchmarks to get to net zero carbon construction in the buildings. The bill that we're supporting, the New York Off Fossil Fuels Bill, would have zero carbon construction. Buildings would have to be zero carbon if they're built any time from 2020 on, zero emissions vehicles from 2025 on. Every county has to have a climate action plan. Every city with 50,000 or more people has to have a climate action plan. It's a real plan to get to 100% clean energy by 2030, which will be an economic boom for the state. Hundreds of thousands of jobs, good jobs in manufacturing and construction, and it will lower electric rates because we won't have to buy the fuel. The sun shines, the winds blow, the rivers flow, the tides and waves come in and out, that natural energy all around us would just be able to harvest it without paying for fuel costs. And I guess the other thing, and I'll stop with this, another issue that we got to clarify is everybody's talking about universal rent control, extending rent control across the state. Nothing yet has been said about repealing the Erstad law, which the real estate industry got passed in 1971 so that the legislature, not the people of New York and their representatives, are deciding on what rent regulations are in New York City. So these real estate barons down here buy legislators upstate who then vote on your rent regulations down here in the city. It makes no sense. So we got to repeal the Erstad law, extend rent control statewide, because actually in Buffalo, the rents are growing faster than they are in New York City. Buffalo has the third fastest growth of rents of any city last year. The other two are on the West Coast. So the rent is too damn high everywhere. But the rents won't come down. Rent control is not enough until we build more affordable housing. And we got to stop giving subsidies to private developers for so-called affordable units that aren't really affordable. That's what we got going on here in the city. The most affordable units are $50,000 income. In my city of Syracuse, the median is $35,000, and the working class is really lucky to make it $25,000. It's skewed up to $35,000 because we got doctors and professors at the hospitals and the university. So that's not affordable housing. That's what happens when you give subsidies to private developers. The most cost-effective way to create affordable units is to build public housing, not the old high-rise segregated projects that we've seen. They need to be mixed income, scattered site, human scale, powered by clean energy. And that would be a program not just for affordable housing, but for desegregation, good jobs for the construction workers, and a clean energy program.
So there are a lot of things that we can do, and I can't wait to debate Governor Cuomo. He says he's got a $15 minimum wage, as I explained. If I go back to work, if I'm not governor, I'm working for 1040 an hour. Governor, where's my $15 minimum wage? Stop lying to the people, and we'll stop right there. Any questions? All right, thank you.